Zwift has been the premium choice of indoor training platforms for some time now, but news broke recently of a new challenger and it could be about to upset their little apple cart. So I wanted to speak to the absolute authority on all things Zwift and what's new in the world of indoor training for this winter. But they weren't around, so I've got Simon. Simon, thank you very much for uh, taking a seat on the SETI. Would you like to state your credentials? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> your Zwift credentials. Uh, well, you Come know, like, I think I'm the, the premier tester of smart trainers and, and things like that here at Bike Radar. Obviously, if you go to bikeradar.com and you've read any of our smart trainers, most likely if it's been written in the last four years, it would have been written by me. And yeah, my, Zwift is my kind of app of choice for that sort of thing. I prefer the kind of gamified uh, take on indoor cycling that that offers as opposed to something like Trainer Road, which offers a more kind of fitness orientated thing. And, you know, I'm just not, I don't really care about my fitness enough anymore, Liam. Fair enough. We are going to talk all about this challenger to Zwift, uh, but we'll also have a little summary of the new hardware that's out there for the 2024 trainer season. So, Simon, what is this new Zwift challenger? Yeah, so the big news that came, I think, like last week now is that Training Peaks, which obviously is a kind of app that many people will know from kind of if you've ever worked with a coach, for example, you can upload your workouts, you can analyze your performance on this website and stuff like that. But they've now acquired a, a virtual cycling app called Indie Velo, which was previously a free app. It was being developed by apparently one guy who used to work for Zwift. I believe he worked in their uh, Zada, where they're kind of like Zwift anti-doping agency uh, part. and But he's kind of like, shot off and developed his own thing and it's like it's a little bit similar to Zwift and it's a kind of like it is a virtual cycling simulator but it has more of a focus on a kind of realistic world physics and kind of like you know wind simulations positioning drafting and all that stuff and I think the idea is that they want it to be the kind of like the most realistic and most verifiable form of kind of virtual online cycling racing. And it looks quite similar to Zwift. You can kind of tell that the guy has worked quite closely with uh, with Zwift. Yeah, it's got a similar UX and a similar kind of like uh, graphical style. But I would say the colors appear a little bit more like muted, mm. slightly more realistic. You know, with, with Zwift's worlds, they're kind of very like colorful, you know, quite game-like, that sort of thing. Whereas I feel like this isn't, you know, trying to look photorealistic per se. Mm but the maps are definitely more grounded in reality. So, you know, you're kind of like your greens and your, you know, uh, on the trees are kind of like you know, a little bit dark, a little bit less saturated. Yeah. And crucially, this is currently free software. And despite Training Peaks' acquisition of Indie Velo, this is going to remain free until at least 2025. So if you want to give this a try, you do have all winter to actually jump on the platform and effectively train for free. Now, obviously it doesn't benefit from the huge community that Zwift has, but it is one of those apps that is actually gaining some traction. Yeah, so according to uh, the wonderful DC Rainmaker, apparently uh, Indie Velo kind of recently announced that it had 40,000 kind of subscribers or people who had downloaded the app. Now that doesn't mean they have 40,000 active users active at any one point, but obviously, you know, with the acquisition from Training Peaks, Training Peaks should also have like a like a even larger uh user base and as you say, all of those people will get access to this now. Now Training Peaks has specifically said that they're going to keep the software free until March 2025, after which point you'll need to have a premium subscription to Training Peaks which costs like $19.95 a month or $125 a year um, in order to keep using it. But yeah, like you say, you know, Zwift has recently raised its prices. I think they're £17.99 a month or maybe like $200 a year, something like that. So, you know, you're going to have to be paying that now if you want to use Swift, or maybe you want to try out this app and you can use it for free until March 2025 and then you know maybe re maybe reassess if you want to subscribe to that, subscribe to Swift, or even jump to something else free. I, I think for me as a Training Peaks user, the Training Peaks actual training system and logging your fitness and tracking your metrics is really, really good. They do it better than anyone else. And I think it's something that I've never found I could get on Zwift. But if you don't 
like want to do a ton of training and you just want to ride casually, then training peaks becomes a little bit less useful. And there have been plenty of times in the past where I've given up coaching. So I've given up my training peaks uh, premium account and I haven't missed it for the time that I've been away. But this kind of brings a whole new kind of audience towards training peaks. And I think the main thing that they can rival Zwift on is that training stuff because you do so much of your training or I certainly do through the winter on Zwift but Zwift doesn't have the best like um, how do you say performance metrics like tracking software so if Training Peaks comes in and serves that audience through like the indoor training season I can see them picking up a load of new customers, especially this winter when it's all still free. And even when, what is it, March 2025 rolls around and you have to have a Training Peaks premium subscription, the fact that the indoor stuff apparently costs no more on top of a premium subscription is fantastic. Yeah, it that's really right. If, if you've already got, basically, if you've already got a Training Peaks premium subscription, then I, as far as I'm aware, you won't have to pay any more when it become this becomes a premium only feature, this will just be kind of rolled into your, mm. uh, you know, your annual or monthly cost. So that is a benefit. You know, that that will be a benefit. You know, if you're paying for training peaks because you work with a coach, and then you're also paying for a Zwift subscription now, then you've got a real choice to make whether you want to keep spending two hundred dollars or you know however much money to keep using Zwift, or save that money and use this instead. You know, I, I think you're right. You know, so where Zwift what Zwift does really well is obviously like it, it kind of has these virtual worlds and it's like massive active online community. I mm -hmm. think one of my favorite things with Zwift is that every time you log on, the worlds are always populated. You can always find an event to do or a race to do like, you know, on the kind of course you won or you can, you know, there's always someone to ride with. If Training Peaks can get anywhere near kind of replicating that with Training Peaks Virtual, then you know they'll they will be doing really well. But yeah, Zwift doesn't offer anything for kind of like post ride analysis. You know, you have to do that elsewhere now i use something uh, i use like open source software like golden cheetah which i think is really good obviously if you've got a subscription to something like strava strava will also offer those kind of post-ride analytics stuff but you have to pay for strava right mm. you know if, if you want that like if you're really interested in improving your fitness and you want that post-ride analytics then this could be a good thing at getting that virtual indoor cycling software and getting that kind of virtual racing, your you know that competitive fix during the summer, uh, during the winter, sorry, but then also you know that subscription is still useful during the summer because you can upload your summer, your outdoor rides to the you know Training Peak software, do the analysis, and as you say, if you're working with a coach, you can do that stuff too. So you know that that's one area where I think you know, Zwift has moved to offering people yearly subscriptions, presumably because people like to cancel their subscriptions during the summer months. Yeah. You know, and, and you can see why, right? Because even someone who, like me, I'm quite into my indoor training. I, I, you know, if it's really cold and wet outside, I'll happily ride Swift. You know, when it's sunny and nice outside, I don't really ride Swift unless I have to for work. So Simon, I know that you've been on Golden Cheetah for a while and a lot of our viewers will have been doing the same because it is free, open source. Would this actually tempt you over to Training Peaks? I think it's I think it's a kind of tricky one. I think if I was getting back into racing and then I thought I was maybe going to work with a coach or something and they were to going to say, well, you know, I'm going to upload your workouts to trainingpeaks.com and therefore that's how we're going to interact, then I could definitely see myself getting rid of Zwift and just having a kind of Training Peaks premium subscription, killing two birds with one stone and not having to have two subscriptions. That that would seem like a really obvious thing to do. I think whilst I'm more into cycling, you know, from a fun perspective, you know, Personally, I still think Zwift is the most fun virtual cycling app. Now, obviously, fun is a subjective measure. It's fine if you don't don't agree with me on that. But for sure, like, you know, I will be keeping an eye on this. And, and if Training Peaks Virtual becomes like, you know, the big app, I don't, you know, I'm not like, I don't have any reason why I wouldn't switch. So one thing that I want Training Peaks to do with this, and I kind of, decided this before I'd even read the whole uh, article on dcrainmaker.com. I want them to rebrand. I think that Training Peaks Virtual is a terrible name. Even if you go TPV, it still loses to Zwift, in my opinion, because to Zwift is almost the same. Yeah. It is almost becoming a Google 
uh, situation of, oh, I'll just Google that for you. I'm just going to jump on Zwift. Sure. So I, I would love them to go something like peaks or something, a uh, one word thing. Got any, yeah, so there you got any suggestions? Or should we ask the dear audience for suggestions? Yeah, absolutely. Comment below if you have any ideas of what Training Peaks Virtual should be called. Or if you think Liam's wrong and Training Peaks Virtual is an amazing name, let us know in the comments. Let's move on to some new and noteworthy tech now because part of its 10 year anniversary celebrations, Zwift has announced its hub world, Watopia that is, is getting another expansion early this November. Details are apparently quite limited as what to expect, but Zwift says that the expansion will build off the history of Zwift and take Zwifters back in time, which we're both massive Call of Duty fans, and all we can think of is that this is exactly, or sort of exactly, like um, Warzone with Verdansk. Well, it's not quite the same because, obviously, for the, maybe if there's any Call of Duty fans out there, we'll see you in Verdansk in 2025. <laughs> Zwift never got rid of its hub world, Watopia, so that is still there. But they have said that, yeah, this expansion is building off the history of Zwift. And as you say, it's going to take Zwifters back in time. Now, at the time of recording this, we don't know what the details are, but this is coming out during the tour of Zwift, which is kind of on at the moment. So yeah. actually, by the time you're watching this, it may already be out. Yeah. <laughs> so if it was a disappointment, we're really <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, but you know, like, yeah, I think the point is, is that obviously, yeah, Zwift has raised its prices, but they're also not, ra they're not resting on their laurels. I, I think there's, you know, there's, there's always content updates from Zwift, whether it's kind of like bug fixes, new roads, new places, or new races and, and things like that to do. So yeah, there's also plenty going on in Zwift as well. I think the kind of more interesting developments though, have, as you say, like with Indie Velo and Training Peaks been outside of Zwift and mm -hmm. Ruby's new root creator feature is uh, one that you had a look at recently. Yeah, we did some commercial video with them. And through doing these things, you get to do quite a bit of riding on these platforms and try out all of the features because obviously they want to show all of the features. Um, I saw some of the um, efforts from their user-generated uh, content and some of it's really, really good. Like the augmented reality stuff is really, really nice, but that takes Ruby quite a lot of time to um, build those kind of worlds. The user generated stuff, some, you know, users are going pr pretty much onto Timu and grabbing a crappy action camera and then pointing it at the sky. And, and the result isn't the best, but also we were talking off camera and we're both in agreement that we don't want to ride our crappy winter roads in winter. Yeah. I, I, so, so just for, for those who haven't seen it, Ruby's root creator basically allows Ruby users to get a video camera, go ride or drive a local course, and then you can upload that to Ruby, uh, add a load of kind of you know augmented reality features, and it will crunch an augmented reality world for your kind of virtual avatar to then appear in in the game, and then you can ride that route. Now, yeah, the first thing, as you say, that I thought about that was like, well, I don't really want to ride my local roads in the virtual space. I'd rather not ride them in real life. I'd rather live somewhere much nicer than the southwest of England. And, but, you know, obviously not all Ruby users live in the southwest of England. And maybe we could ride other people's uh, uploaded routes. But Liam, if you had an action camera and you were going to go out and film one of your local routes, what do you think you would upload for the wonderful people of the internet? I'd probably go and ride up Cheddar Gorge because it looks quite good and... I feel like the video of going up it would be far better than the actual experience, which is usually uh, a traffic jam <laughs> and the road surface is honestly terrible. Would you also include the stop for cheddar cheese at the bottom? Absolutely. That's, that's part of the experience. You can watch me eating cheesy chips for about half an hour before we go up. Yeah, that's part of the ride. You so too can join in. Yeah, you can yeah. join in and you can eat your cheesy chips in tandem with Liam. I think, yeah, I, I, this is the kind of thing when I heard about this, I was thinking, you know, oh, I'm going to go ride around my, do, do laps of my local crit circuit. And <laughs> and then, yeah, people can ride around Odd Down on the on the internet for us and have some, maybe have someone standing there ringing a bell for the final lap. Yeah. And you can sim, you can throw yourself off your bike to simulate the, the crash that always occurs at the end of the race. One crash per lap. <laughs> um, you know, make sure you break your own collarbone. It'd be brilliant. Um, moving on, my whoosh. If you really want free, uh, tr uh, cheap training software, my whoosh is still free. I mean, it's an Abu Dhabi-backed um, application. 
I'm pretty sure they're sponsoring Pugacha and UAE Team Emirates. Yeah, that's right. So basically, yeah, it's coming out of the same people that sponsor Tade Pugacha's UAE Emirates team. You know, they recently hosted the uh, UCI Cycling Esports World Championship. So, you know, it's a, it's a solid platform. And yeah, like best of all, it's still free. You know, it can't, I think a little bit like Training Peaks Virtual, it can't boast the same sort of user base that Zwift can. There are still events and races and group rides and all of that sort of stuff. You know, as I said, the world, the the kind of amount of people on there probably won't be the same as something like Zwift. But if cost is your kind of like number one factor, then I think my wish is probably still the app of choice for free users. Absolutely. Um, trainer tech now, which seems to have plateaued and we're kind of disappointed this year. There, actually, no. There have been some actual kind of uh, static bikes. I personally really find them hard to get on board with, but they do have their place and there are people that want them. Um, But the actual turbo trainer, the smart trainer market seems to have, it's like a wave that's lost its momentum a bit. There are lots of incremental updates this year. Yeah, so I think there are kind of two stories here. Like one is, as you say, is the kind of rise of like smart bike frames. But then the other is that we are definitely seeing a kind of like plateau of smart trainer technology. And and I would question actually, like if you've brought a smart trainer in, you know, say the last five or six years, whether anyone needs to Absolutely. upgrade to one of the latest models. You know, I think there has been a like a rising minimum standard which is good because I think in the past there was much greater variability between the kind of the quality of like, you know, you had to pay quite a lot to get something like a Wahoo Kicker Core. You know, it would have maybe cost £650 or dollars like in the past. Now the price of that has come down, you know, to something like £450 and there are competitor options that are just as good as it. But generally, you know, I've still used an Elite Directo XR, for example, mm-hmm. which I first tested back in like 2020. Yeah. And like, you know, yeah, it's missing a couple of like quality of life features that I would maybe like in an ideal world. Like it doesn't have Wi-Fi connectivity, for example. Uh, you know, like the latest uh, Kicker V6 has Wi-Fi and then it can update its firmware automatically. And it can also connect a little bit faster to, you know, your computer and stuff like that. Mm. It also, you know, the Elite Directo XR doesn't have automatic calibration, you know, which yeah, can be nice I to rem- have. I like, remember doing those calibration runs and they're a bit of a pain. A little bit of a pain, but like generally I find with that trainer that as long as you don't move it or swap the bike on it, then it, it's yeah. kind of fine and it's stable. So it's not a big deal. You know, we're not seeing massive increases in the kind of like accuracy of the internal power meters or like say the ride feel for example you know we had things that were a little bit gimmicky last year like the wahoo kicker move which kind of like slides back and forwards but like I hate all of those systems <laughs> it's such a passion you know the only one that i you know obviously tax tax has a, a similar function with its neo 3m but it's got a little bit less movement i think than the wahoo kicker move personally like I thought it was like okay it felt quite good when you're on a tt bike and you wanted that like little bit of extra movement underneath you but on a road bike like the whole kind of like the way it moves is it like swings back and forth on a kind of like curved track so anytime you get up out the saddle the bike kind of lurches forward and then whilst you're still out the saddle it like swings back again and it just it it just felt a little bit strange like it wasn't an obvious upgrade and when it costs you know three four hundred quid more I will. I, it would be something that I would personally just not bother with. Um, so yeah, like the, the smart bike frame thing is more interesting. You know, we've seen things like the Zwift Ride come out in the Elite Square. You know, I think the as an experienced cyclist, I, it does for me. I was just like, why would I not just get my winter bike? Yeah, and just leave that on the trainer. Because these are eight hundred dollars yeah. roughly for the for the Zwift one and. That is, or that certainly was the price of a decent winter bike back in there. But if you go on Facebook Marketplace now and buy a second-hand bike, you can get something really, really good with probably disc brakes. Yeah. Well, or, do you even need disc brakes for a, for a treasure bike? If you got a bike, you can take that off the trainer and go out on a ride. You know, if if the sun comes out in the UK from now until February, but. Personally, that's why I don't see the point of them, but I know that so many people have a dedicated space for 
a kind of indoor training bike. And I, I completely see the point for them. Yeah, I think this is aimed more at the kind of like beginner market, more at the people who maybe would have brought like a Peloton bike, for example, yeah. or yeah, wanted a kind of smart indoor bike. You know, if you were looking at, say, buying a you know a Wahoo kicker bike or a Tax Neo bike or something like that, you know, those things were like two thousand five hundred pounds or maybe even three thousand pounds for some of the higher end models. So then you're looking at this, you're looking at kind of like, you know, yeah, eight hundred euros or or eight hundred dollars if you only want the the frame. Or even just you know, twelve hundred pounds, twelve hundred or thirteen hundred dollars, thirteen hundred euros, if you want the frame, and then a smart trainer as well. You know, I think the only the only kind of cautionary point I would say with the Zwift one is that, like you know, as you may have guessed, it locks you into using Zwift really because the kind of virtual uh, gear shifting only works if you're connected to the Zwift app. So if you're not into Zwift, it's just worth being aware that you'll only be able to use the Zwift bike, uh, the Zwift ride in Erg mode outside of Swift. And so therefore, you know, if you think you ever might, you know, like now Swift, to be fair to Swift, they have sort of said that it's not intentionally a closed system. And then maybe it may be that they will let other apps like develop and use the same protocols. But, you know, currently they want that. They're not going to go out. They're not going to go out of their way to develop it, to develop it, to be compatible with my whoosh or whatever. Right. So, you know, or training peaks virtual or whatever it ends up being called if we come up with a better name for it. Um, so I would just think about that. And yeah, like for me, I, I, I think if I wanted a, you know, because this is essentially, it's it's a bike frame that you just bolt to a smart trainer, right? Mm-hmm. So if it was if it was me, I would just get an old bike frame yeah. and bolt it to the smart trainer because it will be much more flexible in terms of, you know, potentially like cheaper to buy po- components for, mm-hmm. for like, you know, swapping swapping components to make it fit you. But it'll also just be a little bit cheaper and easier, especially if we've already got something lying around. The only thing I would say is that these um, kind of indoor bikes generally have some kind of adjustability built in so that if you and, say, your partner or two, you know, if you've got a housemate that also wants to train indoors, you only need one thing connected to the bike and you don't have to cart it off. You can just change to your position which yeah. can be really really helpful especially like i know i've been in house shares if you're limited on space that is a game changer yeah as long as you don't mind sharing the same saddle right with your sweaty housemates i think they'd have more of an issue sharing with me <laughs> if we're honest um the one indoor uh, sorry the one indoor trainer that i really think people should have a look at is jet black's new thing because that looks fantastic we're talking Wi-Fi connectivity, automatic calibration, plus 2%, uh, plus minus 2%, power accuracy, 1,800 watt maximum, um, and it comes with a Zwift Cog pre-installed. And it's not that expensive, I think. No, I it's think like £399 or $399. And I agree with you. I think that's just the kind of standout smart trainer launch this year. And look out for a review of that on bikerider.com and this very channel soon because I will be testing it. It's basically like kind of hitting all those kicker core specs, but bringing the price down another kind of $50 or you know £50. And I think it looks really good. You know, Jet Black... You know, obviously we haven't tested it yet, so I can't say that it definitely is really good and that you should go buy it now because you know I haven't ridden it. But Jet Black does have you know a good kind of history in this space. They were the manufacturing partner for the Zwift Hub, which I've ridden and tested extensively. It was very very good before it kind of got discontinued in that whole fallout with Wahoo. <laughs> I've, I've got a Zwift Hub and it's fun. It is really really good. Yeah, yeah. so I think I, I kind of got high hopes for that, but obviously yeah, would wait to you know, see reviews from from us and, and, and elsewhere, other people in this space before kind of committing to something. But I, I, I think it hits that price point where I would say that, you know, whilst I would say that if you have a direct drive smart trainer from recent years, then there's no need to upgrade. If you haven't yet brought a direct drive trainer, I think now is a really good time to buy one because there's a lot of competition in this space and those kind of more entry level models like the Wahoo Kicker Core, like this uh, Jet Black uh, Victory, you know, there are other ones from Elite, from Tax, you know, all of those entry level models have kind of come down to much more accessible mm-hmm. price points. And, you know, a kind of say like a Tax Flow Smart, for example, is a kind of basic wheel on smart trainer. Those cost around £270. So for only a kind of, obviously that's an RRP, you might be able to get a sale, but, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. For only a kind of £130 more on paper, something like the Jet Black Victory 
be vastly preferable in terms of like the ride feel, the performance, the kind of consistency, like just even like the general heft of a, of a direct drive trainer makes them ride better because, you know, wheel on smart trainers tend to be lighter and flimsier. They just move around a bit more underneath you. They just don't feel as good. So that would be something I would recommend if you're kind of like still on an old style wheel on trainer and maybe like, you know, using your power meter to power your training or whatever, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how I started out. But if you're wondering about should I upgrade to a smart trainer, I would definitely think about jumping into an entry level direct drive trainer. You know, the massive upgrade that I'm going to make this year. Headband. <laughs> yes, it's going to be like Roger, Roger Federer. I'm going to look amazing. I'm all on, I'm all on the indoor cycling headband. Actually, I think the indoor headbands are very good underneath time trial helmets as well. They stop the sweat dripping down your visor. That's a good little mm. tip. But no, for definitely for indoor cycling, I think they're really good. And I also like uh, like tennis sweatbands as well. I much prefer those to draping a towel over your handlebars. The amount of times I've like dropped a towel or it's like slid off during a hot, like a like a Zwift race or something, and then you're just like looking at it on the floor. <laughs> Huge <laughs> <laughs> The remainder of your race, wishing you know, wondering whether you should like ring your partner to get them to come in and you know, hand it back to you yeah i think headbands and sweatbands are uh, uh, excellent choices liam and i would like to see a picture and if you'd like to see a picture of liam in his roger federer headband in a community oh, post no. perhaps do let us know in the comments below uh, i think the moral of the story here is that you should go and check out that free training app uh, but don't bother paying for a new trainer. If you need one or you're dipping your toe into the indoor training world this year, there are plenty of budget trainers that are pretty good. Uh, Simon is doing his very best to test them all. So reviews on bikeradar.com as soon as he's done them. We'll light a fire under him, I promise. <laughs> Actually, a lot of the trainers that we tested in our old video are still pretty much the same. So I'll put this over my face, not yours, because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm nice like that. Uh, if you liked hearing us or watching this, do give us a review on your podcast platform or hit the like button down below. And as ever, send any thoughts or questions to podcast at bikeradar.com or pop them in the comments below. I've been Liam Cahill, he's been Simon Von Bromley. See you next time.